Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and now we have Emma. Woo! Love you, Emma. very much for asking me along tonight to do this, it's really nice. Um, I'm going to start with um, a poem by somebody that I really admire, which is Anne Sexton. And this is called Cripples and Other Stories. My doctor, the comedian, I called you every time and made you laugh yourself when I wrote this silly rhyme. Each time I give lectures or gather in the grants, you send me off to boarding school in training pants. God damn it, Father Doctor. I'm really 36. I see dead rats in the toilet. I'm one of the lunatics. Disgusted, Mother put me on the potty. She was good at this. My father was fat on scotch. It leaks from every orifice. All the enemas of childhood, reeking of outhouses and shame. Yet you rock me in your arms and whisper my nickname. Or else you hold my hand and teach me love too late. And that's the hand of the arm they try to amputate. Though I was only seven, I was an awful brat. I put it in the easy ringer, it came out nice and flat. I was an instant cripple from my finger to my shoulder. The laundress wept and swooned, and my mother had to hold her. I knew I was a cripple. Of course, I'd known it from the start. My father took the crowbar and broke the ringer's heart. The surgeons shook their heads. They really didn't know. Would the cripple inside of me be a cripple that would show? My father was a perfect man, clean and rich and fat. My mother was a brilliant thing. She was good at that. You hold me in your arms, how strange that you're so tender, child, woman that I am, you think you can mend her. As for the arm, unfortunately it grew, though mother said a withered arm would put me in who's who. For years she described it, she sang it like a hymn. By then she loved the shrunken thing, my withered little limb. My father's cells clicked each night, intent on making money, and as for my cells, they brooded little queens on honey. On boys, too, as a matter of fact, and cigarettes and cars. Mother frowned at my wasted life. My father smoked cigars. My cheeks blossomed with maggots. I picked at them like pearls. I covered them with pancake. I wound my hair in curls. My father didn't know me, but you kissed me in my fever. My mother knew me twice, and then I had to leave her. But those are just two stories, and I have more to tell from the outhouse, the greenhouse, where you draw me out of hell. Father, I'm 36, yet I lie here in your crib. I'm getting born again, Adam, as you prod me with your rib. that so, talks about her father I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a poem about my father um, my, I, one of the best things about my dad is he, he says things exactly as they are um, it's this few sort of things going on in my family at the moment so my sister's having trouble with her, her boyfriend and I phoned him up today and my dad's a taxi driver and when he gets a call from the um, the people who tell him where to go he has to say go ahead on the radio so I phoned up and I went, go ahead, Emma, go ahead. <laughs> um, and I said, oh, what, what, what's going on? Like, is, is everything all right? He said, he's a fucking wanker, Emma. He's a fucking wanker. He really is. He said, you know what? He said something to me the other day. It's left me fucking speechless. He says it as it is. And that was it. He that was it. <laughs> so he's, he's great. Um, so this is called... A father like me. I didn't want to be daddy's little girl. I actually wanted to be daddy's son. 
I wanted a football, a racing track, a power car, a gun. I didn't want Cindy, Polly Pocket, Barbie. I staged a late night heist, a hit and run involving Ken and that white Ferrari. <laughs> Barbie's dead and Ken's to blame. The Ferrari's in the car wash. That was my kind of game. Or I'd hold Cindy upside down, swirling her hair in a puddle. What you doing? I'd hear him shout, but I'd fight off my father's offer of a cuddle. One Easter, all trussed up, pink frill dress, shiny new shoes, straw bonnet hat. I went exploring, ribbons and raveling in the wind. I went searching for my reflection in a bucket of oil. Its silky surface I swirled with a stick, never finding the bucket's bottom, but the pink and black don't mix. Each fingerprint spreads as I tried to wipe the last. Oil became a thing between him and me. I grew up, bought old bangers of cars, learning measures made by a dipstick, that everything with a yellow cap in a Ford can be filled up. Oil, water, washers. Ignoring my mother's new shade of pale pink lipstick. I held my body rigid as he taught me to check tyres and water, levels and tread, my back's axle aching. When I pulled out the fuse for the wipers instead of the flip catch for the bonnet, he made a comment about women and cars and my heart was punctured. He took my sister's boyfriend to the scrapyard searching for spares. As the car turned the corner of our road, I was left apart, only a front door key on my fob. To him, I was still his little girl. He wanted me to meet a nice lad and settle down and have babies, I suppose. He doesn't know of the army pants in class three's dressing up box, shoving them over my skirt. He, my father, doesn't know that I was always the dad. While other girls fought over clip on earrings and dragged five sizes two big heels across the orange carpet, their toes in the points of 1986 stilettos, I was busy being like him, rolling paper pretending it was a cigarette, watching the chair, sorry, watching the telly, sitting in the chair. He didn't know. I'd spent years basing myself on him. And suddenly, I find I've grown up all wrong. It's like Oedipal instead of Electra. It's like I've got my wires crossed, my circuit board fused, system shorted. I was a physics paper problem where you decide to close A, B or D, D to get E, E, the lighthouse to light up so the boss can see C. My walk is his, my talk is his, my voice is an echo arguing with his. So for years, I abandoned him. I was too busy being my own version of him. Until I meet this woman who tells me, I'm not him, I'm me, and that's fine. And for the first time, as I change gears, I notice that my hand actually does look like a woman's hand. And this woman says, having crossed wires is a good thing. She finds them interesting. And this woman comes to knowing me something I never knew existed. She teaches me to know my father as myself. So now, each year as we're all growing older, I'm finding that I do want to be my father's daughter. Imagine this, somebody gives you a segment of lemon. Feel how its skin is candle wax yellow, how its fruit glistens. See the white veins, the clear juice droplets, 